All right, let's do this. Let's get Nifty's six bits onto Nifty and get this gnome finished and fabulous. So welcome to this tutorial. I'm Sarah Shira, also known as Imagine Landscapes, and today we are going to assemble Nifty from The More You Gnome. You'll have six things. Um, all of these are optional. You may leave anything out, although I would suggest that leaving out the nose will leave Nifty kind of un-nifty, but we are going to start with the nose. So we're going to put our hands and our tassels and our feet away for now. Now the nose is going to be sewn centered on this shorter part. I'm going to use the center line of my mosaic stitch here to line it all up. I'm going to flip this up so that we have a nice clear working space. And um, you can see here that on my nose, there's a really clear line of increases. And then there's a pretty clear place where that stops. Now, depending on whether you uh, blocked your nose very firmly or not, it may have, as mine does, a little bit of a hexagon shape here, but um, blocking or steam blocking will take that away. Or like me, you can just decide that it's gonna be um, fixed with the uh, sewing process. And if not, then I'll steam it. So what we want to do is we want to uh, center it and then we want to have it so that the nose is right up here next to the brim line because what we're going to be doing with Nifty is folding the brim down so that it looks like the nose is pushing up the brim. So play around with that a little bit and get it where you want, but you're gonna want it pretty high up. Then you're gonna wanna take your uh, length of yarn. And I have got mine fairly short here and I may need to actually attach a second length of yarn as I'm going around. We're going to use the point where those increases stopped and we're roughly gonna stitch the, gnome down, the nose down all the way around that point onto Nifty. So what does that look like? All right, so depending on how you like to work, you may want to hold it with your non-dominant hand or with nose placement confirmed and a DPN helping me just hold this a little more easily, I now am going to go from the top down and I'm just going to be taking a little bit of the body and then into the nose. And like I said, you're gonna be aiming to end about where that last increase line was, which is on my nifty, about here is the last blip from the knit front and back. Uh, this doesn't need to be an absolute perfection, uh, but it does just help to give you a place to start. So I'm gonna dig some of the, the body up and I'm just going to go through and get a little bit of the nose. Now, because the nose is round and plump and the curved line of it, and we're attaching below that curve, a lot of what we're doing will be hidden, hopefully all of it. Uh, so just going through, grabbing a little bit of body, a little bit of nose. And you can see there that it's going to just sort of fade away as I work. If the part of the body that you are grabbing is under the nose, that is going to make it less likely that the stitch you make between the body and the nose is visible from the side. This is the first time I have tried this nose. Um, I've done a couple of prototypes, but this is definitely something I feel like as we go together, um, I'm definitely gonna be reading in the Ravelry threads and I'm sure someone will have some tips and tricks that I didn't think of and that will make me better at this next time. I will of course share everything I learn the next time we do a nose and a gnome shaped this way. But the wonderful thing about gnomes is that it's not very high stakes and we can all teach each other and be a bit of a, an adventurous beginner together. All right, so that looks pretty good to me. I am going to quickly take out my DPN here and see how we're doing. That feels pretty secure. If this was a toy, I would do much more. I would uh, go back and do a few more uh, attachment points, but mine will be a decoration. So what I'm going to do is just do one final attach right here, the top of the nose. And then I'm going to tie a knot and bury this end. So I've made a loop, 
going to go through that loop twice. And as I tighten the second one, I'm just going to use my thumb nail to kind of pull that knot closer and closer. I will now just push the needle through the nose. I could also go through the body if I wanted. Pull taut and snip nice and close. That end is gone. So now, look at Nifty. Uh, I was at a cafe the other day uh, and I go there regularly and there's an older gentleman and he asked me, so when does a gnome, when does a gnome finish? When does it, when is it a gnome? And I said, when you attach the nose. So Nifty is now a gnome. <laughs> it's official. Our feet are our two larger single color mystery bits that look like this. I've stuffed the ball part. So we, we knit flat and then increase. I've left that flat bit empty so that I can flatten it. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be placing them using our diagonal lines. So the Nifty's height makes this a little hard to show you, but we've got these diagonal lines. And using the diagonal line, I'm going to place the outside of Nifty's foot along that diagonal. And in terms of placement forwards and backwards, you want it back enough that when Nifty sits, it, it's nicely covered, but you want it forward enough that Nifty's weight is mostly on this flat bit and we don't need to worry about the ball of the foot tipping Nifty backwards. So if you've really overstuffed this, Nifty's gonna have a tendency to want to tip backwards. And I think for instance, this might be overstuffed. So I'm just gonna pull a wee bit of my stuffing out. I encourage you to uh, use that DPN trick to uh, put your placement on and then see what you think and if Nifty balances. So I'm going to use, I'm going to use, uh, I've only got one DPN near to hand. So I'm going to use the sewing needle here for one of them. We'll use the DPN for the other, lining that up. So the outside of my foot edge is along or covering that decrease. And it looks like that's pretty good. I think I want them back a little further so that um, this is a little bit more uh, to the back and the balance will be good and that um, it won't, it'll, it'll, it'll look a little more rooted to Nifty's body. So I'm gonna move this one back for sure. Uh, so what we're doing here is we're getting Nifty's toes pointed just a little bit on a diagonal that helps the, the line of the look um, sort of look more whimsical and also um, visually gives us uh, a nice, diagonals are really pleasing for our, our brains. So let's get these sewn on. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a bit of the body and go through both layers of the foot opening. And we're just going to do a whip stitch. So a whip stitch kind of you come down and around, you whip down. And so what you're going to be doing is creating uh, vertical stitches, unlike a running stitch, which creates horizontal stitches. So body, both layers of foot, body, both layers of foot. And that's all there is to this. Now, one thing I would encourage you to do is wait until you've um, done the second one to weave in the end. So do both, don't weave in the ends, and then without needles, without other things helping Nifty to stand and changing the way the posture is, do both and then have a look-see then take that end in forever. And if you want this not to flap open so much, you can also go in and sort of weave your needle in and then just in the center, do some stitches right there to kind of change the, the, the attitude of Nifty's foot. But generally speaking, Nifty will be placed with the gravity on top and it will look just fine. All right, we're gonna do the hands next. I know in the directions the tassels much earlier in this, but uh, just because of the height of the camera and everything, I think it will be easier if I don't have the tassel attached right through this whole process. So we've got our hands. They are similarly stuffed as to the feet. We've left this top bit open so that it can be nice and flat. So what we wanna do is we kinda of wanna line it up so that the corner is roughly lined up with the hand part and we want it to be on the same diagonal, this line 
same as this line, and we want to cover about three lines of the hand with the brim. That's an approximation of what works for the nifty I made, but that doesn't mean that's going to work for your nifty. So, you know, you, the nice thing about the hands is you can kind of stuff them up and then figure out if you like it, if you don't like it, and, and kind of play around with it. So I've got that there. So we're kind of lined up with that corner. We're on an angle. What that does is it pops the hands towards the front again. And um, a lot of times the placement rules, well, not rules, the placement I, guidelines that I give you are about uh, creating a gnome that uh, kind of works on whimsy and uh, a little bit of character. And I found that by placing the hands just a little bit more forward, Whimsy had, or Whimsy, uh, Nifty here had a, a slightly different, more uh, engaged kind of look. And obviously as the star of a children's science show, Nifty would be very much interested in looking engaged and like a, an approachable, marvelous uh, person full of curiosity that ch children and toadstools would relate to. I honestly, folks, don't know if I'm saying that toadstools watch television in the Grimblewoods, but um, I wrote it and it made me laugh. And that's usually the standard of um, the standard of what gets to stay in the little stories I write, if it makes me chuckle somehow. All right, so we're going to loop up this yarn, make a little loop or not. I will say, as a reminder, if you are making these as toys, anything that is uh, sticking out will get a lot of um, time being carried by that. And so you would definitely want to be doing more than just maybe one set of whip stitches. You might want to do something like taking the yarn, going underneath, and doing a set of sort of stitches, kind of the way we attach the nose to the to the body, you could kind of go along here and, and counter reinforce, um, but uh, it's also pretty easy to repair. So don't don't sweat it too too much. All right, so we've got our hand attachment demonstrated here, and as you can see, Whimsy's really or Nifty's really coming together. Uh, my nose right now is popping, or the brim is popping off a lot. Once we get this more decorative, that will stay. But if you would like to, if you're struggling with it, maybe your slip stitch was, was tighter and you don't like what's going on, one thing I would suggest is take some of your uh, color too, and you can just pin or tack it down in a few places to make that look more permanent. Or if you want to like, oh, I wish it was just a little bit farther. You can do that. Make that happen with your finishing work. All right, let's tassel this Nifty. So this ta the idea is that the tassel is going to sit spiking straight up and giving Nifty just a very awesome um, sort of like final flourish of personality. If you want your tassel to be droopy, that's fine. You do what you want to do, but I'm going to show you how to spike the tassel at the top and just provide this sort of a fountain effect of fun. So we are going to secure it onto the hat and then we're going to try to help it stand. So I want not this at the front, but this at the front. So rather than having it look like this, I'm going for this look. You, of course, may do what makes you and your nifty happy. So the key thing is to first provide a really good uh, attachment point. So by going through this sort of little base of color two that we have here, and then going, let me get this end out of the way. If we go through the center of the tassel, we're going to basically going to be, let's see here, make sure you can see, we're kind of forming a great big loop. And we're going to do that a couple of times in this direction. And so when we tighten this, it's going to provide a really stable base. So go through the center of the tassel go through the base of the gnome, or the, I guess the tip of the gnome. And then we're going to do the same thing with the other end. So I'm going to go, 
the other direction. I'm going to go through the base of the gnome. <laughs> Again, not the base, the tip of the gnome, the base of our work here, and go through this nice little tunnel of the tassel area. Through the gnome, through the ta uh, tassel, and now I'm actually going to go front to back with this one, and I'm going to do it again, just so that I have a little bit of um, extra stability, not just in this direction, but also in this direction. So let's have a look. How is that doing? It's definitely stable. It definitely wants to stand up, but let's encourage it to stand up even a little bit more. So what we're going to do is we're going to take each end and we're going to go from the base of the gnome, just snag a little bit of a stitch there, then travel up along the tassel, sort of like following the line of the tassel, and you're going to come up in the wrap itself. Then go down in a slightly different spot so that it doesn't just undo right away, and kind of pierce the plies of the, the wrap, come back down, and when you do that, you will see that this will just disappear. And if yours doesn't, you can always nudge the wraps to cover it. So you can do that once or twice with each of these ends. And then we want to bring them together and knot them and bury them. Hopefully that is enough to get to the look we are going for. If this is a toy, I don't know how long it will last like this, but these are pretty quickly um, you can make these tassels pretty quickly and you can put it on pretty quickly once you know sort of the approach. So up through the binding here, down in a slightly different place, come out there, make it nice and invisible. And now mine has the stability I want for a uh, decoration. If you want a little bit more, you can do some more uh, attaching in different directions going up. And because it's the same color as, oh, I'm losing my end there. Because this uh, yarn is the same color as this part of the tassel, going up and down a few extra times will not be visible and it will just work really well in terms of um, giving you scope to secure it the way you want. Ooh, I'm running low on end. Look at that. All right. So let's get our ends knotted. And I'll even show you a little tip for what to do, how to bury ends when your yarn is getting really short. So there's one knot. Whoops. Don't want to, don't want to force the, the tassel on too much of an angle there. Although that would be a pretty cute look too. All right, so if you have ends that you can't get on the yarn and turn the needle around and plunge it in, the trick is to plunge the needle in already. Once it's in, you can then thread the yarn on the needle and then just pull it through. And even though that was a really short end, it's gonna be, it's gonna be off and disappeared. All right, so I've plunged the yarn, or I've plunged the needle through the, the tip of Nifty I've threaded the short end on there, and now I can just pull the needle through and that will help that end go away. So if you've ever, you're ever stuck with a really short end, that's the little uh, technique for doing when you, you don't have enough to, to flip your needle around and get it back in your fabric. Then we'll just snip those away. And now we have a really cute nifty. If you want, you can play with how the binding and like sort of the placement of things, how things poof or don't poof. You can kind of change this a little bit um, and you can uh, just have a great time adding a little flair to the top of your nifty. Thank you for joining me. I hope you had a great time. Happy knitting and happy gnoming. Mm -hmm.